You're going to love this. Trust me. Yo, what up, Dragon Ball Junkies? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. Today, I'm bringing you guys a pack opening of some Dragon Ball Super Card Game event packs and tournament packs. These are the Event Pack 9s and the Championship Pack 2022 Volume 1. I got 10 of these to open up. We already know what's in these. These are the, the new promos for the online webcam regionals that I did. I did Core TCG and I did Carta Magica. I just got participation prizes for both. We're going to talk about that tournament and we're going to open up these packs today. I'm going to let you guys know what I think about online tournaments, um, you know, how the tournament went, things like that. And we'll get into it all in the video right now. Let's go. Guys, we have a major problem. I lost the footage. A lot. It was it was recording, but my hard drive was full, and so that whole eight minutes that I just recorded, ah oh man, it's not usable. Dang. Well, basically, let me talk about. I'm just gonna talk for a minute, explain some of these cards to you guys, and uh, break down these online regionals for you real quick. So. It was cool. We did the online webcam regionals Saturday and Sunday a couple weeks ago. If you guys are um, new to the channel, I've got videos all over the channel from the, the Card of Magic webcam regional and also past regionals that I've done. And um, basically the Card of Magic one, we did that on, on day one. I played Janemba Mill and I'm putting out videos. I ended up getting 39th. So it was only seven places away from bonus prizing. But uh, the next day, I was planning on playing Blue Green Majin Buu, which is what I'm keeping this these two cards for. Um, Blue Green Majin Buu is just a pet deck I've been playing with for a long time. Uh, these new cards just add a fun little new trick you can do to it with um, with this Buu right here. So, and all I have to do is throw two of these guys in the deck, and two of these in the deck, and I can actually reduce my my five costs down to three. I think it's at four. I don't know. I run it at three or four, the five drop. Uh, and basically it just gives you one turn earlier for two energy less. You can get to your five drop boo with this guy. Um, or you can go into this guy and swing with them and they can't draw off the leader. So anyway, I ended up not playing with blue green Majin Buu on, on the core one on the second day on Sunday uh, because I did well with Janemba but I played against a lot of red with Janemba and I learned matchups. I learned where I went wrong. I made some changes to the deck and I was like, all right, day two, I'm gonna play with Janemba again. And then I ended up playing against totally different stuff. Like uh, the card of magical one. Sorry if I keep saying day one and day two, it was two different tournaments, but it was two days in a row. Um, so card of Magica, I played against five, five games of red decks with Janemba and so my thinking was that, okay, there's a lot of red in this. And I already, that's why I played with Janemba is because I knew U7 UI Goku was going to be the no most represented deck. So, uh, which is what people are, I guess, putting this card in. I knew that was going to be the most represented deck. So I thought Janemba mill, uh, that deck almost mills itself out. So I'll play Janemba and, and, you know, help them mill out quick. And then plus decks that draw a lot. King Piccolo draws a lot. Golden Freeza draws a lot. I played against all that good, those good matchups for Janemba at the Card of Magic one and got 39th, went five and three. But then in the core one, um, by round five, I was already three losses, two wins and three losses by round five, which wasn't as strong of a start as I had had the day prior. And I was kind of just blown out on Janemba and I was playing against everything bad matchup for Janemba. Sin Shinron. Played against Sin Shinron, played against Gogeta Zeno. Um, you know, I, I could have won the Gogeta Zeno game. I screwed up really bad, but Sin Shinron is just a hard matchup for, for Janemba because they lock your leader down. You can't mill them as fast. And you just don't know have enough defenses to get through their big uh, onslaught of attacks if you, if you run out of Nimbuses or whatever. But so I didn't play Blue Green Majin Buu on day two. I played with Janemba again. A little bit changed eventually once i finished my series from the card of magic tournament because that's the best placing i've ever done is 39. Uh, once i'm done with those videos i will do a janemba deck list 
Uh, it will be slightly different than what I played in the card of magical one because I had things like I had a one petrification in there. Uh, I didn't have any commies in there. Uh, the petrification you can't even use. You need a black leader, and I had it, so it was just a dead card in my deck. But anyway, we got participation packs for both events. Did not get, did not get top in either, unfortunately. But we got five championship pack. 22 volume ones for each tournament so we got 10 in total and we already knew i've done a video talking about all these cards where i've gone through all these cards uh, but now we're starting to see what their values are sitting at basically for each tournament you get one of each of these cards so i did two tournaments so i have two of each of these cards a play set would be four but we have half a play set and um, basically so we've got two of the planetary manipulation uh Two of these is going for you know ten to fifteen dollars right now in the auction group. So I'm gonna sell these, probably make ten to fifteen bucks. Um, they're for the Chompa and beer decks. And then this K this SS2 Kefla. Um, I mean it's a decent blue card, I guess. Not really. Not really, unless you're running the cards that cheated out. And you're not gonna be running those cards unless you're playing a kale deck, and you're not gonna be playing a kale deck because you'd rather just play SS4 Vegeta. <laughs> basically is what it breaks down to i would love for maybe in the future this deck will get more attention but this is for the kale deck uh two of these i'll probably get you know 10 bucks for them um but i don't need them even though i usually keep my blue staples i don't think that's a staple uh, unless they do a lot something to make the kale deck broken and then that card blows up in price but for now i'm gonna sell it um we got two of these nail namekian guardians uh good yellow card good dot deck yellow card no i don't think so it lets you it lets you bust out this old piccolo card for cheaper so maybe like niche players that want to play a piccolo but we also do have some namekian attention in the next set so i'm thinking i might actually hold on to these actually because right now if i sold them i'd probably get like 10 bucks for both of them um but we know namekians are getting some attention in the next set so I might actually hang on to these just in case they blow up in price with some Namekian thing in the next set. I don't know. It's nail. I might sell them, but if I sold them, I'd get like 10 bucks for both of them. The booze I'm going to keep right now, 10 to 15 bucks for these, but the money card, the money card is this Android right here. We've got two of these. These are going for like 50 to $70 a piece. So I should make a hundred to anywhere from a uh, hundred to 150 bucks for these two. And I'm not going to use them. Um, it, people are putting it in U7 Goku, but it gives your leader Invoker. Uh, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience playing with Invoker, so I'm sure there's some cards you could jam into U7 Goku, but you don't want a lot of extra cards in that deck. You want more U7 cards in that deck. Um, U7 leader, I guess you could use it in the Invoker leader, um, but, you know. Again, I don't play Invoker, so I don't need this card. I'm going to sell it. And so if I sold, keep these two, sell all these, you know, 10, 20, 30 plus 100. Bottom line, we got like $120, $130 in here for a $60 investment for two online tournaments. Playing a game I love, so it's not like, you know, it's work. I just chill here and get to play games for two days and doubled up my, my $60 that I paid to get in and that's pretty cool that's just participation if i would have done better then you know you make you can make a little more money back get cool cards but we also and that's not even then you also get three of these event pack nines from each tournament so before i realized that the vid wasn't recording and i lost that footage i did open one so i've got the pack right here we open this ssb vegeto soaring blow so i'm not sure everything that comes in these i i have looked at it but i can't remember but um i don't think it's like a set thing i think there's a bunch of different possibilities and we got three from two different tournaments so it should be pretty mixed up what we get out of these i don't think we're going to get like one of each cards but i'm hoping i'm pretty sure the piccolo junior eradicators in here the black supreme kai that goes in the vegeta xeno deck is in here uh the boo unison might be in here or i can't i can't remember what's in all these oh repost repost is in here so let's finish opening these up see what we get higher dragon vanilla wah, wah, wah. that's garbage dude why would you 
put a vanilla in an event pack. Especially when you already killed the leader. That's dumb. I don't know why that's in there, guys. Maybe... Hey! There's Piccolo Jr. Descendant of the King. Nice. I don't own any of these. Now I finally own one. <laughs> yes, they dropped down in price. Um, good red card, you know. Man, now that I have the freaking Vegeta secret rare... It's like, I, I kind of am tempted to play U7 Goku because I've got two of these. I've got the Vegeta Secret Rare, but I don't have any Divine Presences. And I only have one of the Gohans. And those Gohans are like $25 a piece. The Divine Presents are like $25 a piece. So I'd still have to invest like 150 bucks just to have everything I need for that deck. I still need to get one more. I need one more of these unless we open it. So I'm just going to sell these. You know, get the money and keep playing my jank decks. Can we just get another freaking yo? Nice. Hey, I'll be keeping these. These are a good little chunk of money. I'm thinking these are going for like $15 a piece right now. I could be wrong about that. I know they're going down because of Fest and everything. They've dropped a lot of price. But these were like a $25 unit, and that's why I don't own any. I never pulled one and they're expensive. Oh yes, nice. I can't believe when these first came out, I sold Supreme Kai Time Summon from another dimension. This card, I don't know about since it has this new reprint, but it was like a $40 card. But I had two of them. I sold them back when they were like $10 cards. I think I sold two of them for like like 18 bucks or something. And then Gogeta Xeno popped off and these blew up. Um, and now I would build Gogeta Xeno. I have Trunks Xeno built right here. Um, and I would build Gogeta Xeno. But I don't own these cards or the uh, or the unison that they use. I own one of them. The uh, what's his name? That other dimension guy starts with a P, I think. P P Picon. I don't own any Picons. All right, is this cells coming? Coming on? Yes. I don't own any of these either. Nice. So our event packs were great hits. These are. Uh, I don't know the prices on these since. They've been reprinted, but this was like a $25 card. This was like, I know they've reprinted it a couple times now, but um, this was a very a money card, and this was like a $40 card. Um, if I sold all these, I think I could make pff, probably another, I don't know, another 20 bucks minimum here. So, like, that's our prizes, guys. It's, it's probably like 140 minimum in prizing. So, I'm going to throw some of these things up on the auction center right now. And yeah. Awesome. So those are all of our pools, guys. It was really fun uh, opening those up and playing in the tournament. A um, couple like critiques, some critiques and my thoughts on webcam tournaments. Um, I definitely appreciate it. I appreciate Core. I appreciate Carta Magica. Whoever puts them on, I appreciate it a lot. Um, I know a lot of people don't like respect it as a legit tournament. And I understand that because there is a lot of cheating um, that goes on. There's things that things that I notice. like, okay, so here's a question. Is it okay to have uh, DBS deck planet or back in the day it was Shenron's lair or DBS decks, whatever. Is it okay to have that open on your, your computer right here next to you? Because here's my thoughts the last two tournaments uh not the not the most recent two but two before that i was doing that i had the deck open in front of me and some people in this most recent card of magic gun core one some of these people were doing this in the tournament and and i don't have a problem with it i but i'm just telling you what what i what i thought about is when so this most recent one i didn't do it why didn't i do it in this most recent one but i did it in the one before that well, it's because in the one before that, I realized if somebody's playing freaking this deck, somebody's playing this deck, Majin Buu, Unadulterated Might, okay? Now, maybe you've never played against this this leader before. Maybe you don't know what this deck does, um, you know? You don't know what it does mono green. You don't know what it does blue green. You, you've never played against it. You don't know, right? You type in this leader name. Onto DBS Deck Planet, it's not just going to show you this leader. Um, it's going to show you this leader and, like, what am I trying to say? 
basically you're trying to find the card yes you can type in the exact name it'll just show you that card but how do you know that somebody's not just typing in majin buu with the green filter on and then it shows them all and that's what you know what i experienced myself was i was playing against decks that i didn't know what they did and when i would type in one of the cards it would show me all the cards that go into that deck and that archetype so in this most recent one the one that i got 39th in and then the one I dropped from, from core, I was not looking anything up. So I just had to go off of, you know, it, and it sucks because it makes games take longer because normally with a card game, I want to be able to look in my opponent's eyes. I want to be able to reach over and pick up their cards. I want to reach over and pick up your drop area, look through it real quick. I know what I'm looking for. I don't want to tell you what I'm looking for, but now I have to tell my opponent, okay, uh, can you pick up your drop area? And can you go through it and you're you know the, the picture's kind of blurry and there's a light shining on your cards i can't really see all the cards so i need to know how many god ceilings you have in there i need to know how many super combos you have in there i need to know these things i need to know how many saiyan instincts you have in there i need to know how many rebrands you have in there i need to know if you're playing a deck that plays stuff from the warp or from the drop i need to know all these things and it's annoying to have to keep asking your opponent this over and over um I like to just be able to reach over and pick up the card. If I don't know what it does, I can pick it up and read it. Um, you know, I can ask my opponent to read it, but how do I know? There were times that I, this, this is a mistake I made where like, I don't play the card, um, heroic prospect trunks a lot. Well, one time in the card of magic of tournament, and this is on video, somebody asked me what's I, I used it. I know it stops things that are bigger than their energy from swinging. Right. I know that much. And I played it. And he's like, uh, and what's that do? I said, uh, you can't swing with stuff bigger than your energy. And he's like, at all? And I was like, oh, wait, hold on. Let me look. And then I read it and it says you, he could still swing, but he just has to discard two cards every time. I mean, I left that out when I was saying it. Luckily, you know, I, I read the card and I corrected it and I let him know. And then it was all fine. But you have to trust that your opponent's telling you exactly what the card does, not leaving anything out. And so that's one of my other problems with online stuff with the online regionals is I can't reach over and pick the card up and read it. I've got to ask my opponent everything. Sometimes I'm giving my opponent information on what my strategy is by asking certain questions. And those are questions that I shouldn't have to. It's public information. I should just be able to. I don't know. But, you know, for advice for guys, you know, um, if your opponent puts something in their energy or something's in their drop, you don't know what their deck does. You don't have it pulled up next to you. Um, you can look at their cards and read their cards that are in their energy, in their drop, in their warp. Ask them. Say, hey, uh, I don't know what that UI Goku does, but you got one in your energy. Can you read that to me? And they've got to read the card to you and explain it to you. So, but yeah, the, the prizing, um, the last ones last year. They gave you a play mat for entry, for participation. I thought that was awesome, but I understand why they didn't do it this year. Everything's more expensive and uh, that includes shipping. So they had to ship out a card box with a mat in it and your participation prizing to everybody, 200 some 56 people who enter this tournament. That's a lot of shipping. And so now they just did packs, but these are great packs, great cards. You know, it's definitely worth the money to buy in. Um, it's fun. You know, you just got to keep your eye on people. People do be cheating out there, though. <laughs> like, but it's so funny. They'll cheat and they're like on stream. Like so many people are streaming. So many people are recording their games. Uh, it's just not smart to try to cheat in tournament. You're going to get caught. And um, but those are my critiques. Yeah, I I one thing. One thing I wish they would have done um, is I wish they would have done a play mat for I, or maybe not a play mat, maybe just a bonus prizing for top 50% to appeal to the people who aren't great, but they're going to hang out there all day. They're going to play. Um, not They're not the people who are just going to drop. So the top 50%, you know, give them an extra two of these event packs. Um, top 25%, two more. So they get, if you get top 25%, you get four more of these uh, event packs. That would be sick. And then, uh, and then they did a play mat for top 16. I like the play mat for top 16 better than the play mat for, uh, for first place. They did a play mat for first place. So that's all I think. 
Um, those are my only critiques on the online regional. I will get you guys a Janemba deck list once I'm done with putting out all the Card of Magicka videos. I'm not putting out any of the core videos. Maybe one. I might do one of them uh, just because it was a fun game against a, a Rainbow Bardock deck. Uh, Mass Saiyan. It was pretty cool. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. All right, Dragon Ball Junkies, thanks for watching the video. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of it. Did you play in the online webcam regionals? If you did, was it fun? Do you, do you hate online tournaments? Do you love them? Do you like webcam? What do you think about the status of the game? The in-person events, fests, I heard they were great. There were some problems and then, you know, other things went well. So let me know what you think of the status of the game right now in the comments guys give the video a like if you liked it thumbs up subscribe ring the bell check out twitch tv slash dragon ball junkie and watch the video and playlist that i got going but for now guys i'm out peace